Okay, here we are on take two. <laughs> First time and didn't record. I forgot to hit the button. Eh, idiot. So, at about 9.30 this morning, I lost my internet. So I had to call my boss because I work from home. Um, tell him I wasn't going to be working probably the rest of the day. Uh, I'm here in Buffalo, New York, and it's Friday, December 23rd. And we're having a blizzard. Yeah, there's about 55, 60, 70 mile an hour winds outside right now. Complete whiteout. Um, during a little while, I tried to run to the post office. Well, I left at uh, about 1030 this morning. And when I got to the post office, they were out of power. But I could still get to my P.O. box. So that was a good thing. Because um, that's what I went there for in the first place. However... Once I left the post office, I started to notice that all the signal lights on the side streets, they were all out, uh, completely dead. And I didn't see any lights on in any business. So I kind of figured once I got home, it pretty pretty much the same. And it was. Power's out. Um, so, but I got all my, I got my solar power completely uh, powered, you know, 100% charged. I got uh, a few uh, anchor batteries for my cell phone completely charged. My two laptops are completely charged. So I can still, you know, I can still function here. I don't rely on electricity for my heat. Um, I do kind of uh, rely on it for the hot water tank to kick on and off though. So I'm going to lose hot water, but I can always boil it on the stove because that's a gas gas stove as well um so i'm i'm sitting pretty good here i stacked stocked up on food and i got no issues there and uh, power really shouldn't be an issue i do use a cpap machine but eh, that solar generator can run it for a week without being recharged so i'm, I'm good so i'll keep you posted and um yeah this will be an ongoing uh ongoing video We had a gas station that is about, oh, about five, almost four and a half miles from our house. The whole over, he, overhead, um, you know, what do you call them, above the pumps, the, the big um, shelter part tipped right over on the gas station. It's, uh, we're hit, getting hit with gusts of like 65 to 70 mile an hour winds. And uh, so, yeah. That's the current update. We're still under blizzard warning, and I guess, uh, well, it's a blizzard, and I guess the warning is going straight through uh, Christmas Eve, right into Christmas morning. So, when they said it was going to be a white Christmas, uh, they should have kind of elaborated a little bit on uh, blizzard, not just white, blizzard. Okay, folks, well, I'll keep you updated in a couple hours. Uh, that's as far as we got. Power's still out here. Um, good news, though. Internet's going to be back up in about three hours. Uh, doesn't matter as long as the uh, national grid's down here. Uh, no, no clue when that's going to be returned. Okay, well, that's it for now. Talk to you in a bit. Okay, well, I decided to... Give you guys a little look at uh, what we're going through here in Buffalo. So I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll get a shot of outside. Yeah. There it is. Welcome to Buffalo, or as I'm referring it to uh, as today, Ice Station Zebra. That'll be it for now. Um, I'll give you an update in a little while. Okay, it's, uh, it's 3 o'clock now. Storm's still raging. Still no power. So that's the update. It's uh, wind chill is minus 30 degrees now outside, and uh, the weather report is still uh, still predicting this will last through to late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. 
so that's the update. Um, I do have my ham radio going, and uh, I've been talking to guys all around the country, and um, yeah, it's a pretty big storm. All right, so um, let's just pull this and give you another look here at the gorgeous Ice Station Zebra. I can barely see my neighbor's house, which is approximately nine feet from my house. <laughs> All the houses across the street is gone. Um, the wind, oh my God, we're hitting gusts of 70 to 75 mile an hour. It's literally shaking the table. The whole house is flexing from the gust of wind that comes through here. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's pretty bad. So that's the update for now. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome to Ice Station Zebra. <laughs> All right, it's uh, about 5.30 now. And um, yep, still blowing and snowing. <laughs> Old man winter is really pissed off. Still in the dark, as you might be able to tell. I got my headlamp lighting my face up here. Um, I do have an oil lamp next to me, but it's nowhere near bright enough for this lens. So, yeah, this is where we're at now. And I think we're in for a long, cold, dark night. I don't foresee the power coming on while this is a raging blizzard. Um, still getting pretty strong gust. I don't know what the wind speed is now, but it's probably still up to around 60, 65 to, uh, miles per hour. It's a pretty much sustained 40 mile an hour wind, 45. So, yeah, it's it's still pretty bad out there. I went out to dig my porch out um, just so I wouldn't be trapped in the house and be able to open my door. Uh, I threw the parka on for that one. <laughs> I got a nice, big, warm Canadian park, Carhartt parka. Um, that thing's rated for minus 140. So, yeah, I stayed pretty warm in, in, in that thing. And um, the only thing that suffered a little bit, even with the snorkel, the hood snorkel with the fur, it's one of those. Um, it, I still got a pretty good amount of snow blown in there and uh, kind of made my face tingle. <laughs> Because it's still minus 30 uh, degrees wind chill factor. And uh, so, yeah, and I pulled the all the frozen vegetables and everything I had frozen that I want to I wanna protect. Pulled it out of the freezer. Um, I could run the fridge with my solar generator, but I don't know how long this electricity is going to be off. And I'm using that thing solely for my CPAP machine so I can sleep. Because I can't sleep without it. Um, but I, I pulled everything out of the freezer that I, I want to protect. I put it in a nice uh, burlap bag. And I set it right next to my back hall door. Because my back hall door has got a gap underneath it about that big. And there was a whole blanket full of snow there. So I set it right down there, right against the... Right against the door, my thermometer wouldn't even register my uh, digital thermometer. It just said too low. So that thing can go all the way down to uh, 28 degrees before it won't register. So I know it's well cold enough out there. And uh, then I took a garbage bag and I just put it over. and uh, Actually, it's a contractor garbage bag. And I just draped it over the... Uh, the bag against the door and made a nice little pocket there. So that stuff should s stay frozen. Um, but that's it for now. That's the update. Um, still hunkered down in the bunker. <laughs> hunkered in the bunker. I don't know. Between COVID and the blizzards, I don't think I'm ever getting out of here. <laughs> well, again, that's it for now, folks. I'll give you an update later on before I, uh, I hit the rack. Okay, it's a little later now. It's about 11.30 at night, and uh, 
the storm's still raging on. <laughs> Here at Ice Station Zebra, um, we're still we're still hanging in there too. Um, the house is shaking and rocking and rolling, and I went out in the kitchen and noticed one of my steel racks actually swaying back and forth when that wind blast. Um, so yeah, I am pretty confident the the power is going to be out for the rest of the rest of the, the evening and probably well into tomorrow. Um, so nothing new here on that front. Um, I did hear some kind of weird animal outside though. <laughs> um, it was a howl, but it wasn't like a howl. It was like a howl and a, a shriek together. And it was loud, man. It, it sounded like it was right outside the the front of the house. And I looked out right away and there was nothing out there. So I think maybe it was the abominable snowman. <laughs> um, wouldn't surprise me now. Um, yeah. So that's going to be it for tonight. I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to hit the rack and uh, hopefully tomorrow there will be a uh, new light and Maybe this wind won't be blowing is so hard, uh, but it is being predicted, uh, according to my uh, ham radio scanner, it is predicted to last until uh, Sunday, into Sunday, and um, probably still snow Monday and Tuesday, they said, uh, but it's a better chance Monday than Tuesday, so we'll have to just wait and see. Yeah, I still got... You know, plenty of reserve energy here for um, keeping things going. I just made myself two grilled cheese uh, about an hour ago, and uh, they turned out really good. I got most of my stuff in my fridge out in my back hall. The freezer's uh, freezing. The the food in the freezer, I should say, uh, is down on the bottom uh cement slab right next to the door uh, I think I told you this earlier and I just checked on them and they're pretty well frozen <laughs> um, that's that's a deep freeze down there and anything that I don't want to freeze I can put on the upper shelves on the upper uh, deck of the back hall that doesn't freeze but that does stay around 34 35 degrees so it's about the same temperature as in the fridge um, so that that's good. Um, I do have a, a couple of things I'm trying out. I, I got in my front door, between my storm door and the front door. Uh, I think it's actually freezing. Um, I, I put some uh, guacamole uh, salsa in there on the floor, on the uh, the jam there on the in the door. And uh, there was some ice crystals on top of that. So I, I think it's actually going to freeze. I don't really care because I don't really care too much for it. <laughs> um, and there's only a little left. I've been nibbling at it, trying to get it eaten anyway. Um, and then I put some cheddar cheese, shredded cheese, out there too. Um, cheese freezes, but it doesn't freeze, you know? Uh, it's one of them things that... You can get away with throwing it in the freezer and it won't hurt nothing. So, um, but yeah, everything is still good. I made myself some uh, tea earlier. Um, I don't have a tea kettle, but you know, you just take the. I, I usually make the tea with my coffee pot, my four cupper, and just put the tea bag down in the pot and let it percolate the water through and. Um, yeah, fill the pot, and then that's my tea. So I pretty much did the same thing. I just filled the pot with water, dumped it in a big pot on the stove, heated it up to almost a boil, throw my tea bag in back in the coffee pot, and uh, added the water. Waited uh, about 10, 15 minutes to let it steep, and it was really good. Came out good. I kind of like creamer with my tea and coffee. I'm out of creamer. Yeah, that hurts. But, eh, I'll live. So that's it from Ice Station Zebra tonight, and uh, I'll talk to you folks in the morning. 
Sleep tight, stay warm, stay safe. Good morning from Ice Station Zebra. Man, it really blew last night. The house was shaking. The wind was howling. I just listened to the weather report. It's still about 30, 30 below uh, wind chill. And uh, the house is a little chilly this morning. <laughs> I got a really good heater, but um, it just it can't keep keep up. Uh, the back of the house where the heater is is pretty warm. It's around uh, 70, 70 some degrees, but it's got to flow from the back of the house to the front of the house through gravity heat. And uh, the front of the house is a little chilly. It's uh, about 62 degrees. So, hence the ski hat. <laughs> um but yeah, the weather report didn't give any good news. It stated that we're going to experience this for another day or so uh, with heavy snow. And um, I just discovered some uh, new uh, issue here. I can't get out of my house. I got two really big snow drifts right against both of my doors. The only way out of this house, if I had to get out, would be through a window. Um, so yeah, luckily I don't have to go nowhere. I have plenty of food and, uh, supplies here. So, eh, I'm good until at least Tuesday or Wednesday anyway. So let's just see what happens as far as energy. Um, I can stretch it out until about Tuesday. Um, hopefully this ain't the new ice age. <laughs> But, yeah, that's it for now. Just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, the only new event is Buried Alive in Snow. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the title of this video. Buried Alive in the Arctic Circle of Buffalo, New York. <laughs> Alright, folks. That was just a quick update. I'm still alive. Doing okay. Talk to you later. Alright. I'm back. <laughs> All right, it's about uh, quarter to eight in the morning now. It's starting to get light outside. Um, not going to get any sun because the stupid blizzard's still going on. It'll be going on for another day or so. I just uh, assessed the situation a little bit better, and um, yeah, I'm screwed. <laughs> um, let me get these off because I think there's a reflection there. <clears throat> So, yeah, we're, um, we're screwed. But the good news, let me make sure it's in focus. Yeah, so uh, I got plenty of food, plenty of water. Uh, water lines are still good. Uh, I got a little uh, trickle going in the bath uh, bathtub just to make sure the lines stay open. <clears throat> I'm not really expecting them to freeze because of all the snow. It's good insulation around the bottom of the house. There's going to be no air drafts that get at the pipes. Pipes are well insulated. So is the floor. Um, so, yeah, everything should be good. We're just, I got the house battened down, all the hatches battened down. Um, no way getting out the doors. That's impossible. Uh, it's about four and a half, five foot of snow up against the door, and it's about five, six feet deep, <laughs> um, width-wise, away from the door. So, yeah, that ain't getting opened, neither one of them. But I just threw some eggs on the stove and uh, some bacon, and I'm going to sit down and have a good breakfast here in about 30 minutes or so. I tapped into, um, I ran out of eggs, actually, so what I did was I tapped into my uh, my long-term storage which I have about a year's worth of food there so um, yeah I'm gonna have a good breakfast and uh, I will talk to you guys later all right that's the update from ice station zebra stay safe stay warm <laughs> talk to you in a bit hi again from ice station zebra Okay, so little. this is a little update. Um, as you can probably tell, this video is filled with little segments of updates. So the sun's out. Well, the sun's not out. It's still 
blizzarding out, but it's light outside. And uh, it's now uh, about 11.30 in the morning. No news from National Grid when I'm going to get my power back. Um, so, yeah, they just have the basic same old, you know, we're experiencing outages and we're doing the best thing we can to, you know, get the power back up and running. But I know, and probably most of you know, while it's still really bad outside, they're not going to have crews out there um, trying to restore the power. They're going to wait until it's not so dangerous outside. So, yeah, I'm uh, just going to be working on lunch now in a little while, probably about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Um, and then that's about it. You know, I've talked to more people on the ham radio, and luckily I get the NOAA weather service on, on that radio too. It's a little handheld. Um, I got three batteries for it. Each battery can monitor for about 27 hours. So that's that's a good thing, you know, they're extended batteries. Um, so I got no problem there. Uh, other than that, yeah, everything is good. I'm camping. <laughs> camping in my own house today. And tomorrow, <laughs> maybe the next day, it depends. Um, no one's outside the best I can tell. Uh, no one's even walked down my street. So it's just a barren white wasteland out there. Um, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated here. That's it for now from Ice Station Zebra. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and stay full. Adio. Hello. Hi again from Ice Station Zebra. So... Uh, I figured I'd make myself a little lunch. It's about 1.30 now. And, uh, yeah, so here's what I'm having for lunch. Chicken cheddar tacos. Burritos, whatever you want to call them. All right, yep, so I can't wait to taste them. I think they're going to be good. I'm going to eat them while they're warm. So... Adios for now, amigos. Stay safe, stay warm. Be back with another update very quickly. I from Hello from Ice Station Zebra. <laughs> Still storming. It's about 5:30 quarter to 6 in the evening now, Saturday. Um, still snowed in. Still can't get out of my house. I got beef stew cooking on the stove right now for dinner. And, uh, yeah, it looks like I'm in for uh, another night. Uh, another round of, uh, uh, wintry weather. So, the Weather Noah station is not giving any breaks here. They're pretty much forecasting all the bad parts of the Bible still. And, um. Uh, <clears throat> no no news as of yet on uh, when we're going to get power. So that's still the situation. It's ongoing. Uh, it did warm up a little bit outside. It is now 13 degrees with a wind chill factor of minus 10. So, yeah, we're, we're experiencing a little heat wave here. The penguins like it. Um but the only way you're going anywhere here in South Buffalo is with a dog sled team. That's if you can dig out of your house. Um, I did manage to get one of the windows clear. And uh, just about every neighbor's front door has big snow drifts in, in front of it. So I don't know who can get out and I don't know who's going to help who. But um, if I could get out, I'd sure like to you know, dig out one or two of the neighbors if I could. But... I'm stuck. I can't get out. I'm not going to risk climbing out a window either. With my luck, I'll land funny and break a leg or injure my back where I couldn't get up and then freeze to death out there. So I think I'm just either going to wait for some nice person to come and clear the front of my door so I can get out or spring, whichever, whichever comes first. So that's it from Ice Station Zebra. This report is over. Stay safe, stay warm, folks. It's a 
cold one out there. Hello from Ice Station Zebra. Well, it's about 8 o'clock in the evening, and uh, still not a single soul, I don't think, has went down my street. But I do have a new event that just took place. So I thought I would um, I would tell you about it. <laughs> not too sure how good I'm going to sleep tonight. See, our, our neighborhood uh, had a big building behind my house and it was a um, originally it was like a junkyard then some years later it got turned into a recyclable place um, and th along with that when that ended they turned it into a rock crushing place and the neighbors finally got fed up and took them to court several years later um, the places ended and just last year, the building, the big building that was back there, burnt to the ground. And the neighborhood got infested by these big-ass, I mean, big-ass Norwegian rats. Norway rats can grow between 8 to 10 inches long. They're huge. They're, they're like the New York City sewer rats, you know. Um, something you don't want to tangle with. I caught one, I... I actually ordered, uh, I'm not going to go grab it, but I ordered a cylindrical, uh, it's about that long, and it's about that ro that round, and it's got amazing spring jaws at the end of it, and it's got two feelers that hang down, and as soon as they get moved, this thing comes down, it's like a big jaw. Well, I, uh... I baited one last year um, and set it out on my porch and tied it to my porch railing. One of these damn Norway rats got in there, um, and they're smart too. They looked that thing over like they were trying to, you know, create schematics to build one. And it took two days. They wouldn't go in it for two days. They checked it out the whole first day and first night and... When they felt confident that this thing, they, they knew what it was, they, they knew it wasn't going to hurt them, uh, one stuck its head in there. And it was a smaller female one. Um, yeah, these things came down, and I don't know how it didn't just kill it instantly, but this thing was still alive, and it was trying to pull itself out. It flopped this trap all over the place. If the damn thing wasn't tied down, I think I would have found it maybe down the street. I had to literally, because I heard this, it made a huge, huge racket on the porch, um, because this thing was like flopping around, hitting the railings, and um, it was really throwing that trap around. And it's a big, heavy-duty trap. It was screwed down to a big like two by four and well anyways I had to actually go out there and pretty much dispatch it with one of my arrows um, I didn't shoot it I just stabbed it um, and honestly with the razor broadhead it took quite a bit of force to get it through its thick hide and muscle um, and after I did that because I, I did it out of reflex because I didn't want it to get away I wanted this thing dead. Um, and the more I thought about it after I did it, I'm like, that was pretty stupid. Um, if that thing would have pulled itself out of the trap, it would have been really pissed off. And if I'm like walking up on it, ooh, that could have been bad. <laughs> um, so I'm sitting here really quiet and um, I'm just reading. I was reading, actually reading the Bible. And uh, next to me is the wall. And it's behind my desk. And I hear crunch, crunch, crunch on the wall. I stopped reading, obviously. And I'm not talking little nibbles like a little mouse. I'm talking like chunks of wood being ripped off at one time. So I got a feeling I got one of those Norway rats made its way under my house and now it wants in to get out of the cold. So, <laughs> don't know how well I'm going to sleep because these things could probably eat through the wall in probably 10 minutes, if that. Um, they big, powerful little jaws on them things, not little big jaws. So, yeah, 
not going to sleep real well. So right now, <laughs> I decided I was going to sit with my, uh, it's, this is a Smith & Wesson Governor. It's got a laser on it. And uh, it's actually, I don't know if you can see this, it's actually a shotgun. <laughs> it takes a 410 shotgun shell. Well, I normally carry a uh, triple odd buck in there for two legged critters if one breaks into my house, but I switched it over to a turkey load. <laughs> it's number four. It's pretty heavy stuff. I'm going to blow a nice little hole in my wall or my floor if I have to shoot it, but um, it's the latest stuff I got. I, I don't have any birdshot, which would have been preferable. Um, actually, maybe number six. <laughs> Um, four is more of a turkey and rabbit round, like four and six is for rabbits, but, uh, six is a very light shot. The thing about shotgun shells, the higher the number, the smaller the little BBs that come out of it. So, uh, you get number seven, that's like little tiny, tiny, tiny little, uh, lead projectiles. There's probably like maybe 50 or 60 of them or... 70 of them in, in one shell. They're very, very tiny. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one of them, one of them little monsters gets in my house. I'm not going to play with it. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm just going to freak out and shoot it. <laughs> um, I might scare the hell out of the neighbors because uh, the da damn thing's loud, but it's more of a peace of mind thing for me to know if I wake up and I see that thing like sitting on my bedroom floor or heaven forbid it's sitting on like open my eyes and there it is on my chest, you know, looking at me. I'd be, oh, probably wouldn't sleep for a month. I don't like rats. I don't like any little marsupials. Those, those little things, rodents suck. I mean, Mice, they're not bad. I I can handle a mouse. It's just that if it wasn't for all the damage and the chewing and everything that they do, they wouldn't be bad. I mean, not at all. What are they, you know, they, a mouse can't hurt you, but a rat can. Um, so, and I've, I've seen them on the street. The, actually, cats have walked by. I had one sitting in my driveway. Uh, one time it was, I don't know, about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the summertime. And I'm watching this thing out the window and I see a cat walking down. Here's the rat in my end of my driveway and here's this cat. Well, the cat couldn't see him because the, the, the big-ass Norway rat was still kind of behind the corner of my house. So this cat comes walking up and as soon as he gets parallel with the driveway, he stops and he looks the rat's looking at the cat. The cat's looking at the rat. And the rat's just standing there like, yeah, what are you going to do? The cat stood there for about eh, maybe five, six seconds. And it was almost like it said to itself, not, not screwing with this guy. It just kept on walking. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning from Ice Station Zebra. Well, it's Christmas, and uh, the snow has basically subsided. So I just looked at the uh, radar and, <clears throat> excuse me, just woke up. It's uh, early morning. It's about 5.30. Um, just looked at the radar, and the snow band is south of me right now. There's still intermittent... Intim <laughs> intermittent <laughs> can't say that word um, snowfall uh, but the basically the lake effect snow the heavy stuff that stopped um, we're still going to get snow throughout the day but it's going to be nothing like it was because the blizzard conditions are over we still have pretty good wind but it's not the blinding white out that the blizzard brings it's not 45 mile an hour 35 mile an hour sustained it's more like 15 20 mile an hour um 
So yeah, I'm down to one battery bank now for my phone, uh, which should hold. Uh, using it sparingly, I, I should get about four four more days out of it. Um, I found a way to trickle charge it because it is <clears throat> a solar battery bank. It's like a big anchor, well, a small anchor battery. Uh, but I uh, I have a candle going, and I set it up next to the candle, and it says it's charging. How much it's charging, I have no idea, but it is charging. So I am producing some electricity in it. Um, yeah, I got breakfast on the stove. I, I got uh, freeze-dried eggs and bacon and uh, potato shreds soaking in water and getting them nice and uh, rehydrated so I can heat them up and eat them. <laughs> uh, that's about it. That's, that's the current news. Um, I keep singeing my jacket on that damn candle I gotta move it because I, I tend to need to reach over top of it my dumb ass don't know enough to try to reach around it I just reach for what I need and forget the candles there because it's it's down small now um, but luckily this thing is fire retardant <laughs> like its owner kind of retardant <laughs> um, not knowing enough to reach around a candle but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So now I just need somebody to dig me out. <laughs> just clear the snow away from my front door and I'll be a happy camper. Um, side door is kind of tough to get through because there's about six foot drifts in my yard. And there's a big six foot fence that would have to be completely cleared away before you can open it to get to my back door. So yeah, front door is the option here. Uh, my buddy did say he'd come tomorrow if I if I needed it, so <clears throat> we'll see. The one neighbor's got a pretty decent sized snowblower, so might be able just to clear my uh, my walkway there to get to my porch, and uh, maybe he'll be kind enough to shovel me out. He did last last uh, time we we got a lot of snow. He's a good guy, so uh, hopefully. Hopefully we'll get that uh we'll get that taken care of. Hello. <laughs> Ice station zebra calling. Ice station zebra calling. Any station over. Well, snow's officially stopped. The winds calmed down. The temperature's starting to go back up, so that's a good thing. I'm no longer trapped in my house, though. I dug a tunnel out. That's right, I dug my way out of my own house. I only had to take apart my storm door. <laughs> I'll put some pictures in the in the video to show you my endeavor. I didn't film the ordeal because I really didn't think that I was going to be able to remove the whole middle section of my door. I got one of those... Uh, doors that you can slide the window the upper window down and as it comes down the screen comes down well there's glass in the bottom part and glass in the top part and so I'm looking at this door and I, I had the wit top window down excuse me I had the top window down and I was looking out at the the chaos everything left and I, I noticed these little tiny screws that's holding an aluminum border around and it just got me thinking I'm like I'm wondering if I remove these screws and take that border off can I just pull the window inside is is that what's holding it in I wasn't really sure you know and so I took all these little screws out there was like eight of them and lo and behold I went I touched the, the whole window and it fell right out landed in the snow which really wasn't too far I mean it just tipped forward and it was kind of like hanging there because the snow was part way up the window um so I pushed it out the rest of the way and uh turned it on an angle and brought it in the house then I got my luckily I have a entrenching tool a breakdown tool it's like a multi-tool it's got a knife and a whistle and screwdrivers 
uh, for the handle, and it's all, you, you screw in each section of the handle to make a long shovel, but it's, it's a little, um, it's a little entrenching tool, basically what it is, a military-style entrenching tool. I was going to put it in the car, and uh, I'm really glad I didn't, because it would have been a real bitch trying to get the long handle shovels out, out there to shovel. So I use the entrenching tool just to dig a little a little oval hole, um, round oval, whatever, uh, enough for me to step through to outside on the porch and then start shoveling from there. So that's what I did, and I, I cleared the whole pathway on the porch. Didn't clear off the whole porch. It's a lot of damn snow out there. Um, and uh, my neighbor, everybody on the street, everybody in this section of the city is out of power. Been out of power since Friday. This is Christmas now. Uh, Sunday evening, it's about 4.30, 5 o'clock. And um, so everybody is kind of like freezing who relies on electricity to either circulate water through a pump or uh, ignite their furnace. So... Without power, all their cell phones and that are going dead. So my one neighbor was on the porch while I was doing this, and he yelled over, he goes, Hey, if I help you shovel, will you charge my cell phone? I'm like, yeah, sure, sweet deal. Because uh, I, I have a uh, solar generator that's got stored power in it. I don't have any solar panels, but it's a big one, so I charge it up, and it'll hold me for uh, about five, six days in the house. So anyways, I don't use it to run lights. I just, I have a CPAP machine. I use it for that. It'll run about seven, eight days for the CPAP machine. So anyways, I was like, yeah, sure. So he came over and we made one path uh, down my driveway and up my stairs to my porch. And um, he went home and got his, his cell phone. I told him to get your mother's cell phone too because... Uh, she was there and so I, I brought him in and I, I charged him up and I gave him back to him and um, I, I told him I go you know you didn't have to shovel to uh, get me to do the cell phones I would have charged cell phones for you for you know um, he's, he's like no Merry Christmas I, I wanted to help you out anyway I'm like okay cool works works out um, works out for me anyway Hello, from Ice Station Zebra. Guess what? My power is back on. The crisis is officially over. This is awesome. It's, uh... The power came on about 10 after 8 p.m. Christmas. So, that was my Christmas gift. Thank you, Santa. Santa.